Angela Fair here on my channel. We have a lot of fun with watercolor, exploring our love for watercolor in a loose and fluid style, helping you be your own favorite artist. Today we're working with darks. We're going to have a lot of fun using really dark colors in watercolor to create beautiful contrasts. And I'm going to show you some options for using dark colors in innovative ways. You don't have to just paint from light to dark and then stop. You can do a lot once that dark paint is on your painting and I'm going to show you some of those uh, ways to use that today. Starting with a little wet and wet today, saturating my paper. This is Blick Premier watercolor blocks. Um, it absorbs a lot of water in that first layer so it's helpful to go over it twice. And just get that fluidity starting. Um, get the paper with a nice sheen of moisture on it. We're going to do some really dark painting today. We're going to get, we're going to explore our dark side. I'm going to throw some zoocyte up here. had a little green gold on the brush too and that's okay. Uh, you can paint your darks with all kinds of amazing intense color and that's the goal we have in this first wash. We're just going to get some really rich color down. Thalo turquoise and then of course our favorite dark indigo. And we'll go with a little more indigo here in a minute. I'm just going to try to get as much as I can off my brush before I rinse my brush. So we're starting with some darks and the reason we're doing that is because I really want to talk about some of the options you have when you're working with rich dark colors. I think sometimes we hold off on going dark with our color because we worry that uh, we're going to overwork the painting. I'll throw a little more zoocyte down here. And we want watercolor often to look light and fresh. We want that luminosity of the paper to show through. And so working with dark can feel a little bit scary when you're, we're going to go really dark with the indigo on this side. Um, but I want to just show you how when we have this uh, wet paper and we start placing those darks, look at how the, the turquoise first of all just sings out in that in comparison to the darks that we have placed. Adding dark to your painting is a really good way to create contrast and when you don't have any darks at all you're not going to see those strong contrasts. So you need some darks, if not a near black dark, you need to have contrast. So if your lighter colors aren't super dark, you know, adding a pop of dark, even in just a small area can really make your painting have impact. So that's one reason we want to think about using dark colors in our painting. And then once you've placed those dark colors down, uh, it doesn't always mean they're going to stay there. Sometimes we find we can create some really beautiful dark effects um, by placing those dark colors and then using a thirsty brush to start to lift color. So I can take my brush, um, I usually rinse it, blot out any moisture with a piece of paper towel, and then that brush will suck up color. Um, suck up some of those darks and I can make some really beautiful paths in the darks with my brush by lifting out. Let's use a skinny brush. This brush has a really nice narrow tip and I can use it to then feather into my into my darks. I'd like to rinse the brush in between because it'll pick up the dark pigment and if I'm starting in the light area and then pulling to lift I don't want to have a dirty brush when I touch that turquoise. And as my painting, and, and there's some really beautiful feathery effects, as the paper is starting to dry here just a little bit, um, here if I lift a, an area out you can see it it's visible but it gets soft very fast. As this starts to dry any mark that I place is going to stay longer and I can create some really soft feathered effects using a brush, using maybe a feather to pull in, and I can not only lift color out, but I can pull color across. I can pull some of those darks up into my lighter area as well and create beautiful soft effects. And that's working not just with darks, but working wet and wet. And uh, the other thing I really like to do is work with some semi-transparent colors. So I've got a lot of dark here, but maybe I want a pop of light, light value color in this area. That's a really good place to choose a semi-transparent color, a color with a little bit of opacity. This cobalt teal blue, as you can see, I can place it on a dark place in my painting, and it really has covering power. 
it brings back that light value and in this case painting wet and wet um, it's still going to sit on top of that darker paint and give me some <laughs> some light value areas in on top of those super rich darks I haven't done much with the zoocyte I want to point it out because it's just a wonderful color it goes down like a near black it's a really gray green I'm just going to grab a little more to throw up here um, it's a really gray, gray green, but as it starts to dry, you can see it separates and it actually decreases in dark value as it kind of spreads and granulates. And so colors that often go down dark at the very beginning don't always stay dark and that's a good thing to remember. Um, we're going to throw some more indigo down here, really work with this indigo because it is one of the darkest color value colors you might be using in your palette. And uh, so we're going to throw some more indigo down. And again, dark value colors, really good for covering. So even after my painting has dried or started to dry, I can go in with a super dark value. And I like those marks that I'm making, so I'm doing more of them. Uh, now we really only have one little spot of light value. See how the cobalt teal is still standing out. It's still holding its own, even though it's dispersed into the indigo quite a bit. We have other colors that disperse really well as well. Um, cobalt teal is one of the semi-transparent colors. The cadmiums, um, cadmium yellow, cadmium red, they're going to um, be fairly opaque as well. Um, anything with white in it, uh, Daniel Smith's lavender wisteria, those colors also work really well. Um, and I've got a little bit of lavender here, we'll throw some on. And I'm just spattering it in a small dose. And you can see how it sings like little stars on the surface of that indigo. You've likely seen artists using salt and spattering that into a wash. That's another thing you can do while your paint is wet. It works well with dark pigments because it pushes against the pigment uh, as well and moves it. So that is another thing to try. Be aware that salt um, is a rather unpredictable effect. It doesn't always do it, uh, have the impact that you think it's going to have. Now I'm going to show you another color that has uh, what I call a high dispersion rate. This is Nicolazo Yellow. And it's actually quite a transparent color, but like Cobalt Teal, it has action when you place it over darks. And what this uh, Nicolazo Yellow does is it, in the qualities of this pigment, it has this push to it where it will kind of shove against that indigo. So it's more transparent, you can see that yellow kind of disappearing, but at the same time it's um, still visible because it's pushing the indigo out of the way to make room for itself. You can also do that with water, and I'm just going to dot some water in here. That's going to increase movement on the paper and move the pigment on top and we talked about lifting this is similar to lifting but it's allowing gravity to do the work for us and so as that color flows that ex excess pigment on the surface is going to start to move and reveal some of the hidden color underneath and it's an organic way to work with moving those dark pigments and looking to see some of that rich color underneath. Lifting, blotting with your paper towel has similar effects, but it can look forced and mechanical. And we're gonna add some more of that Nicolazo yellow. This is a color that has push power. If you drop it onto wet paper, um, even if the paper is just white, you're gonna see it immediately start to finger out like that. Um, it creates really beautiful effects on top of a darker color. And it isn't, um, I, I'd say it does have some opacity to it, but really not very much. It's, it has just a lovely transparent feel to me. Um, we're going to just spread that out with the brush a little bit there. When I work with dark colors, I try really hard not to be afraid of them. Look at the beauty that's created with that dark light contrast here in my painting. I, by manipulating those darks just a little bit, by lifting in some places, um, lifting with either my brush or my paper towel. And I'm gonna lift again, just to show you some more of that texture that we create. Let's lift a little bit over here. Suddenly we see the underlying layer and a little hint of the texture of the paper towel as well. 
um, if I don't like the way the paper towel leaves the kind of waffle texture, uh, I have to change the angle where I blot. So I turn it, um, I blot it here and there. You can also use uh, tissue. Uh, has a little bit of a softer effect as well. And again, we can pull from the darks and feather it out across the paper. Now, using those contrasts makes for really beautiful watercolor effects. I'm going back to my phthalo turquoise right now. Getting some rich colors in here. Anytime I blot, I feel like I lose some of that rich quality of color. Um, sometimes that works in my favor with my composition. Other times I want to just build it up again. And we can do that when we work with dark colors. We can build up color. We don't just have to do it all in the first layer. But I really wanted to show you how much fun it is to work with these rich colors with indigo, with Payne's Gray, with the Zoocyte again, super textured up in here. And then by dotting in transparent, um, high dispersing colors like the Nicolazo Yellow. Um, Quinacridone Magenta kind of does it as well. Let's see if we can make a little bit of that happen. This is a sample page, so it doesn't have to all be unified. Um, let's drop it in right here and let it see if we can get it to do a little bit of push. And it will, and, and the neat thing is when you're working with a transparent color, I don't love that dot <laughs> right there. It looks like a pimple spread it out. Um, when we add that color, um, it's going to interact with the panes, with the indigo, it's going to interact with the Nicolazo yellow, and it's going to create different effects based on the colors that it's overlapping. And that can be really beautiful with watercolor. We just get these layer, luminous layers of absolute gorgeous color. Another way to create contrast, spattering in those darks, um, I love this burst of light that's coming from this turquoise area, and so I'm really trying to leave it and uh, not toy with that too much. Um, because I have some magenta on this side, and it's really hard to see in on the screen. Hopefully you're getting a little hint of that lovely, rich magenta. And um, if I, I, I'm going to throw a little bit of it over here too, just so I have that echo of the color unity, the same color over here that's over here, and just a tiny speckle in that corner as well. My darks got a lot more interesting when I stopped working with just indigo and I started dotting in those other colors. I have this feeling of light glowing through this darker area, but it's, so it's much more interesting than if it was just a solid dark um, near black of the indigo and that's something that gives my painting life and energy. Watercolor feels alive to me because of the way we can manipulate it, layer it, and then work with those fluid and luminous qualities to make it really uh, flow and in an organic and beautiful way. Don't be afraid of your darks, play with them, work to build up contrasts, look for edges, look for this dark edge and how it makes this uh, this shape have form. I was going to say flower. I see flowers in everything. And <laughs> look for the ways that you can make darks that are actually almost a rainbow of color in that area here. And it's really, really lovely. When we take the under time to understand that black isn't just black, that we get to have all kinds of beautiful colors um, layered within those depths that pull people in to look closer. Our paintings reveal this new life and energy that we may not have, that we may have been missing before.